Hello, and welcome to a very special edition of Unboxing. What do we have in this box? Michael, we do not have role-playing game or tabletop gaming accessories. No, sir. We do not have minis or dice. Michael, we don't have terrain. No, we do not. What we have is much more valuable than that. Michael, tell the audience what we have. We have today in this box a brand new Sony A7 R3. Brand new Sony A7 R3. 4K full frame DSLR camera. Michael. Well, it is actually a mirrorless camera. A mirrorless, yes. A full frame 4K mirrorless camera. Michael, you have spent a significant amount of time. Tell our audience, how long have you spent researching the right camera? I've been researching since December of 2018. And December. It has months. taken me this Seven long. months. It's taken me this long to finally pull the trigger on this camera. And Michael, what, what did you, what led you to the path of Sony and maybe specifically to this camera? Um, first off, mirrorless was big for me. Um, I didn't like the idea of a reflex, an SLR. Yes. The single, the single lens reflex. Mirrorless is nice because you can fit a bigger sensor in. And with this one being 42 megapixels, which is just mind bogglingly insane. Yes. Um, the amount of stuff that this camera can do, it's already ahead of its time, which is so awesome. Yes. Um, and what other features uh, specific to maybe Sony versus Canon, Panasonic, you know, Lumix, Nikon, all that kind of stuff? Um, the idea that this camera is both good in photography and video is something that separates um, Sony from Canon. Canon is a really good photography brand, but this can do both, which really got me into that. All right, well, without further ado, let's do it, man. Let's cut it open. Carve open the top. So this is shipped from New York from B and H Photo Video. Yes. They are one of our sponsors. Actually, no, they're not. I kind of wish they were. We spend a lot of money with B and H Photo Video. So here it is. A lot of packaging. Yes. A lot of packaging. Wow. All right. So inside here we have multiple boxes. Let's start off with the smallest of those, Michael. Go ahead. What is that? It is a road mic. A road mic. Let's show the camera. So. This is, uh, here, bring it back here. Mm -hmm. So Shorty, this is, uh, this is kind of the go-to microphone for DSLR uh, filmmakers. Um, and it's, you know, Rode is a decent brand. Of course, there are other brands that we use as well, Sennheiser and Shure. But uh, the Rode mic um, has kind of become the go-to. And you know what, you could actually see how that's rigged up. Um, it's got the cold shoe, so mm -hmm. it slots in. It's got the uh, eighth inch, you know, 3.5 millimeter headphone style jack stereo uh, input for most of the DSLRs that have a microphone input. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the big thing here is stereo, not yes, mono. Yes, it's which stereo, is very awesome. which is awesome. And it, it has a great shock mount. So the, the shock mount feature um, is really important for, you know, if you're gonna have something mounted on your camera you don't want it picking up every little sound and click that your camera makes. Yes. So great choice, Michael. Mm -hmm. Let's set that over there. So, uh, so before we, we get next? into the camera, let's talk about the lens. Oh, hold on. What do you got? The packing slip, the B and H packing slip. That's, that's important. If this were LTTV equipment, we'd be giving this to Faye. Mm -hmm. She would keep it on file for yep. the next 200 years. I'm gonna take, before right. we get into the camera, let's talk about the lens. Let's um, talk about that. It is a G Master 24 to 105 f4 lens. So, Michael, for those not in the know, why is this lens um, valuable? Like, what makes this lens special and a good fit for this camera? So, this lens is good for this camera because of the length. 24 to 105 is a very good range. So it's a want. zoom lens. Yes. Uh, but it's 24 also on the one. wide side, mm -hmm. 105 on the long side. And F4. It's not variable iris, which is very important. So a lot of people uh, in, who might be newer to kind of the DSLR world might not understand why that, that is important. So some lenses, like actually the ones that we literally have <laughs> mounted on the studio cameras that we're using right now, are variable iris, uh, which means when you zoom in with them, it actually stops down. 
So it might go from like F4 to F5.6, mm -hmm. okay? Yep. So that, that can be a problem because if you have a zoom lens and then you zoom in and all of a sudden your image is darker because the lens is, is variable iris, that, that can be a problem. So mm -hmm. this, is, this stays consistent at F4 yep. no matter what your focal length choice is. Which is correct. Which, now, is, which is great. There was another option. And this is a full frame lens. Yep. So it's frame. not crop. So, so some DSLRs will give you maybe a 4K uh, image uh, pixel resolution, but it's a crop. Um, so like the A6300. Mm -hmm. So a Sony makes a, a smaller consumer level camera that is a crop factor, which means basically if it says that you're 24 millimeters, you're not really 24 millimeters. You're like 1.6 times that. So maybe you're at 40 instead of the true 24. Yeah. But this is a 24 to 105 and it's full frame. So when it says 24, when you're zoomed out all the way, it's a true 24. Yep. Okay, let's talk about other features that work well. So this is a Sony E-mount lens, yep. right? 35 millimeter full frame lens. Mm -hmm. um, what guided you in your research towards this lens as opposed to just getting like a generic, like a more generic kit lens? Right, so there were a bunch of options. Um, this one, it led me to it again for the focal length, um, the non-variable iris, and the fact that it was the least expensive out of um, the other lenses that I was looking at. There was a 24 to 70 G Master with an F2.8, but you know, a thousand dollars more. So, and, and just for those of you who maybe aren't quite sure what that F4 versus F2.8 means. Mm -hmm. So the speed of a lens basically determines how, how open you can go with your aperture, right? So when this, is, when this says F4, that means that fully open, the iris open all the way, the aperture open all the way is at F4. Mm -hmm. F2.8 would be a faster lens. So allowing more light in also creates an opportunity for you to have a shallower depth of field or in, in, um, in a sense, if you're doing something more cinematic where you want a shallow depth of field and more bokeh in the background of yep. your shot, you might want a faster lens. Now this doesn't necessarily mean, like an F4 is not necessarily a horribly slow lens, it just means that you need a significant amount of light in order to achieve that bokeh. And now, I also wanna bring out the fact that Sony itself, their cameras are very naturally good in dark light. So, so they are, they are, Sony has always been very well known for um, having excellent low light uh, video performance. Yep. And this goes back even 20 years ago, broadcast, Sony broadcast cameras were always a little bit better or more efficient in low light scenarios. So I think spending a little less money in an F4 lens compared to an F2.8 was the right call just because knowing Sony's capability in low light. Right, well, and a lot of, you know, a lot of newbie indie filmmakers or DSLR filmmakers or DSLR users, mm -hmm. they get hung up on that concept of bokeh. And they're like, oh, I gotta have the fastest lens possible. And you know what, that's really not a very smart move, people, mm -hmm. because what you need to do before you think of like the speed of your lens is do you need that? Like, what is your application for this camera? So in your case, Michael, are you going to be shooting glamorous shots where you need a ton of bokeh in, in film and music videos? Not really. Probably not. You might be using this more for um, sports yep. and sports highlights. And in that case, no, you don't really want a shallow depth of field because you're gonna be shooting a subject that's moving all the time. Yep. So really, for you, having that extra speed doesn't so much matter. Mm -hmm. Now, some people might say, well, what about you know, having a faster lens for action, blah, blah, blah. The kind of stuff that you're gonna be shooting is gonna typically be pretty well lit. Yeah. So a football game in the daytime, or even you know, at the college the level, lights. on a field under the stadium lights will be more than sufficiently lit for this camera. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see what that glass looks like, see buddy. What it looks like. Ooh, comes in a very nice case. What if you just dropped it and then roll <laughs> off the table, Shorty? Paperwork, always important. You should read it. Well, it is. Now, I usually throw this out, but here's the thing. When you buy things, always keep the warranty. Always keep the warranty. Let me say that one more time. Always keep the warranty. Yeah. Fill out the warranty card, take a picture of it, scan it, keep a copy for yourself, and mail the warranty card in so that it's a registered piece of equipment. Uh, not just if there's flaws in manufacturing, mm -hmm. but also if you do have any insurance uh, coverage on your equipment, 
and you have proof of your purchase and proof of the warranty card being on file with the company that provided the equipment, you have a better chance of getting your insurance coverage um, reimbursed, you know, if you do have to make a claim. Yes. So, okay. that is a fat case, buddy. Yes, I really like Catch the case. baby. Yeah, very nice Sony case. And here it is. Okay, so we have a big fat lens. Mm -hmm. um, nice body cap there, nice, nice front cap, and you have a little uh, hood there. Okay, so, um, and, and what, what you can use this for is, is you can either leave it flipped, so if you just wanna have it handy, yep. or you can actually use it if you're getting any glare or flare like from the sun, or you want to be able to use this in any other kind of capacity with additional fixtures. Like mm -hmm. if you wanted to use this with a matte box, you can, yep. that's removable. All right, let's just do this. Shorty, zoom in to the front of this. I wanna see if you can, can you get it? Is it in focus? I'm gonna take this off for a second so we can see the glass, ready? Oh man. Very nice. It's the cleanest you'll ever see that lens right now, Michael. Yep. Mm-hmm. F4, 24 to 105. Yes. All right, I think it's enough with now, the glass. Now, um, a couple other little features here. On the lens, you have uh, yeah. switches between, yeah, flip that around, Shorty, can you see that? Between autofocus and manual focus. And you also have your image uh, optical steady shot. steady shot. So it's um, image stabilization. You could turn that on or off. That's a mm -hmm. nice toggle. Um, some people ask why there's a white dot versus a red dot on a lens. Um, and typically that's just to show you where you align the lens when you're putting it onto the body. Some lenses have red dots, some have white dots. Quite often the red dots are for prime or fixed lenses and the white dots are for zoom lenses, but it doesn't always follow that formula. No, not always. Um, but that's often the case. And then of course is your back cap. Yep. Beautiful, All nice right. heavy weight to that lens too, Michael. Yeah, really nice. All right, and now the coup de gras in French, the body itself. That is the body, there is your Sony A7R3, Michael. Yes. In a nice heavy box too. Very nice. Just a couple specs. Yep. 42.4 megapixels, mm -hmm. 100 to 32,000 ISO. Yeah, that's... Um, um, 10 frames per second, which is... Truly incredible. Um, I autofocus. And the, the 10 frames per, per second is for your burst mode. Mm -hmm. The high, the high um, capture. For mode. photography. Yep. Yeah. Silent shooting, mm -hmm. which is nice. Um, five axis steady shot for the sensor. Mm -hmm. Dual shot. And, um, and you know, I often talk about how um, the whole reason for using DSLRs in filmmaking is to give you more manual control. So it might seem like a paradox then to advocate for autofocus. But in some filming scenarios, like if you're shooting sports highlights or uh, electronic news gathering, ENG, mm -hmm. you know, if you're doing uh, documentary work, basically in scenarios where you don't have complete control over your set, over your production workflow, then sometimes you might need to rely on autofocus. Now, the smarter that autofocus system is, the better your material, your, your, your capture will be. And Sony has come up with an amazing, I don't know how they do it. I mean, it's, it's, it's truly incredible. It is truly incredible autofocus, like hyper intelligent autofocus. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've played games with inferior models of cameras where we try to like psych out the autofocus and it's just like, it knows what to shoot. Yeah. All right, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's do open it. it up. All right. More paperwork. And the manual. And so the manual. again, you know, a lot of people learn how to use cameras just by playing with them, by, by tutorials. Keep the manual only because every once in a while there will be some rare setting that you need to look up or some kind of function within the camera um, or like some kind of like, I need to do a firmware update kind of thing. So always keep those manuals um, so that you have a reference. Charging okay? cord. Charging cord. Charging cord, very standard. Okay, what else? Oh, this is nice. This is what I like. Very nice um, Sony strap, mm -hmm. um, A7. Yep. Very nice. 
Uh, what else do we got? Here's our battery charger mm -hmm. for the wall. Yep. We'll talk more about batteries later. Very nice. Okay, so Sony actually put in on their newer cameras a USB-C wire, mm -hmm. which is also nice. Um, and USB-C doesn't have one side or the other, it's neutral, so mm -hmm. you can plug it in in either direction into any other slot, which is hopefully all cables will go that way. That's an extra mount. Yeah, another So mount. you've got a, uh, basically you've got another shoe mount there. Yep. All right, enough with cords and cables. I think we got, oh, here's the actual battery. Again, oh, actually, let's talk about the battery now. Yeah. So with Sony, a lot of people that had the Sony A7R2 complained about the battery size and how it would just keep dying. Mm -hmm. So Sony actually doubled the battery life Mm -hmm. And now it's 2,280 milliamps, which is just really nice for a camera. Um, I know some people with this camera that have shot eight-hour weddings with some of these and still are on one battery, mm -hmm. which is very nice. And, you know, part of that is is with a lot of their video equipment, they were using the bigger battery bricks, which last, you know, hours and hours and hours. But when you're filming with a camera that has a smaller form factor, you don't want a giant heavy battery mm -hmm. on the back end. Yep. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's take a look at this body. There we go. Nicely packed. <clears throat> Very nice. Inside a static proof bag. And there it is. Such a tiny little body for such amazing performance. Yes. So let's um, let's scale this here. So you got your lens, mm -hmm. and you got your camera body. Yes. The the lens is bigger, taller, and weighs more than the actual camera body. Mm -hmm. You got a nice shot of that there, Shorty. Um, so it's pretty it's pretty amazing. Um, what about the viewfinder, Michael? You've used Sony. Mm -hmm. What are the pros and cons of the viewfinder? This viewfinder or this? Yeah. The so big the big one. So this is touchscreen. Um, it gives you a very full picture. Um, it's an electronic viewfinder, so it's not looking through any kind of glass. Mm -hmm. um, you know, really, this, really more like a video camera. Yeah. Very, it's very professional, the mm -hmm. way that they have designed this. Now, the top viewfinder is, again, an electric viewfinder, and you're getting 100% of the picture mm -hmm. from it. You're not getting like a, a slightly cropped or slightly cut off picture. That's the full picture, so you know if you have your shot, right? which is truly awesome. And a lot of you know, old school photographers don't like that. They, they want you know, the, the ability to look through glass, but frankly, you know, for, for most of what you're using this for, the electronic viewfinder is gonna be true to the image that you're capturing. And it is true, which yeah. is something that's awesome. Um, you got a bunch of dials over here. This one's for uh, shutter, ISO. Has a very professional feel to it um, on the uh, photography side, which is awesome. Talk about the feeling between having the front dial and the back dial. You know, I, I like it, because on their A6300, um, you had this, which still probably works, mm -hmm. but it's a lot more accessible. You, you, you have functionality at both fingertips. Right, you have um, functionality right away. Like with the Canon T series, mm -hmm. you, have, you have the AV button, which toggles the functionality of your, of your shutter dial to allow you to change your aperture on the fly. Mm -hmm. So your thumb is pressing in a button, almost like a shift key, and then you're dialing. But with this, you actually have multiple um, physical dials that you can actually click through. Yes. Um, um, where does the battery go in? Battery will go in under here. Okay, and that's also the SD card slot? No, which is very interesting. Okay. Let's show you the SD card slot. The SD so card battery's slot, on the bottom. No, not this. The SD card slot is over here. It is a dual SD card slot. Oh, wow. So you could fit multiple SD cards in there. And I'm assuming it has like a hot swap function so that when one fills up, it autom auto automatically over. Yep, okay. it does have a hot swap function. Um, very nice. It, I just recently bought a 128 gigabyte SD card, mm -hmm. which is nice, the Extreme Pro 95. Right, and not any SD card will work 
with uh, cameras that capture in 4K. You really do have to look at the specs. You have to make sure that it's uh, an SD card that's 4K capable, and typically that gives you a certain class and rating and also a specific write speed. Mm -hmm. um, don't go cheap on that because the worst thing on the planet is to have a great camera and you're like, yeah, I'm going to go 4K with this, and then 20 minutes in, the card stops writing because it can't keep up. Yeah. So... Um, obviously, there's settings in this that you know allow you to record at different bit rates and and you oh, know yeah. different qualities and and different aspect. Uh, sorry, uh, pixel resolutions. Yep. Another so one. So, what about the mic input? Mic input. That's over. Is that here. that side? Yes. Okay. There's our mic input. Another mini HDMI, like we were okay. talking about. So you earlier. can have a live view if you want to have a rig. Um, with a, a larger um, external monitor, you've got a mini HDMI out. That's mm -hmm. great. Yep. That's very good. And that's also the plug for um, the mic, which is yeah, cool. Yeah, in that same slot. Yep. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. And then a, what is that? That's for a remote plug, yeah. for photos. Yep. Yeah. So it's got a, a, a physical remote button too. So if you're taking still photos and you don't want to move the camera, Maybe you're doing animation, maybe you're doing portrait photography, whatever. You can put in your remote and click through to take your pictures without actually moving the camera, which is also a really nice pro photo feature. And then here's our chargers again, our USB-C, a little bit faster. And then they still include, which I like, the universal um, micro USB, Yeah. which is what everyone still has. Um, but it's nice that they kept both in instead of just converting. Right. I think that's a very smart and cool feature. Yeah. I agree. All right, so that's uh, that pretty much sums it up. Michael's got a great kit now. Mm -hmm. um, we look forward to seeing some of your work. And uh, if you guys have any questions about camera stuff, um, you could join my community on Patreon, patreon.com slash BillAllenWorld. Um, I answer all sorts of questions about uh, video and filmmaking, as well as, of course, tabletop gaming. So. Um, thanks, Michael, for sharing this unboxing with the audience, Absolutely. and um, we'll see you guys around.